Welcome. This video is about flow hoods. This is the two flow hoods that I have. It's about six foot wide of flow hood total, which is beautiful if you're, you're working by yourself or with one other person. Um, this is a 20 inch by 40 inch flow hood, and this is a 24 inch by 24 inch. This one, I just bought a used blower fan for a, uh, for a furnace. It's a little bit big. It actually pushes about 300 feet per minute. The target is around 100, but if you ask me, I'd rather work in front of a flow hood with around two to 300 feet per minute because it cools you off better as you're working. If you're packing out 50 to 100 bags, you work up a sweat and working in front of a slower hood like this one, which flows around 118, 100, 30 uh, feet per minute, it's it's not as cooling to work in front of it. And I have, I've had no issues with working in front of the faster flowing hood. And how I test that is with a flow meter and a monitor. And uh, this one was about $20 on, on Amazon. It's a, a Hold Peak HP-866 Bravo. And uh, I'll just test it right now. So I, you turn it on, it spins, and it tells you how fast it is. And, and I can measure how much it's clogging up. So if it if it's running at you know 130 now, and then five months from now it's running at 90, I know I need to replace the filter, or I'm getting close to that point. Both of my filter, my HEPA filters have pre-filters on them. That's very important, especially if you're in a grow like me, where I'm not like super super clean sterile room. Like I'm not scrubbing in and scrubbing out. Um, and also I have air exchanging in here whenever I have the uh, the sterilizers, the steamers running, it would just be a sauna in here if I didn't vent it out. So I vent out through the window during the summer when it's hot out, or not through the window, but through the vent, I'm sorry, it's a dryer duct. And then during the during the summer I'll do out there, and then during the winter, I'm actually currently, I need to make it look a little nicer, but I'm gonna vent through here, that's what I'm doing. And it, stem, it sends the steam into the, where the grow room is and it heats and pre-humidifies the air a little bit, which especially in the winter, it's hard to humidify air. So what I'm getting at is there's air being sucked into here that's coming from outside that's not filtered. So these HEPA filters would clog up with, especially in El Paso, we have very bad dust storms. We're in the desert, high desert, very dry, very dusty. So they'll clog up with dust and conk out early. So this one, I had a cut to fit filter. I don't think I have a spare on hand to show you, but it's basically like felt. It's for a, uh, for like in a, in a commercial kitchen to cover the, I think they call it like a hammock filter is what they call them. It's like a V-shaped filter where you, you put the matting on it. Now this one's your more traditional air filter back here. It's a 24 by 24 um, house filter. And it's just a filtreed or whatever, 3M, uh, like the 1800 series filter. And that'll scrub like 98% of it. And then this is just left, it left uh, scrubbing the final one or 2% of the finer particles out. Um, this filter is over a year old. I've already changed this pre-filter twice. And, or I'm sorry, once. And the, when I changed it the first time, it was, it was pretty dirty. And I'd much rather clog up a 15 or $20 filter than a, uh, I think it was like $150. And this one was about $130. Um, so getting into more with the flow matching, the main thing that you want to do is make sure that your your fan is big enough for your your filter, and you want to look into your resistance of your filter. So th this I actually matched. I bought this is a Dayton blower. I forget the model number. It's about two hundred dollars, and I matched this flow hood for shooting around a hundred. I, I went a little bit on the high side because I know that filters, you know, they're going to clog up over time. You're going to go on the, the low side after it clogs up. So you always want to shoot a little bit high um, on your on your new numbers from the, you know, what the what the company says uh, for the flow rate. So you look at the flow rate, say this flows, uh, you know, 400 CFM at 0.2 WG, like the inches of water. Um, so if you, if it, actually, let's, for a number's sake, let's say it, it flows 600 CFM, which is actually, I think, what it flows. It flows around 600 CFM at 0.4 uh, WG. So you figure the pre-filter is like 0.1, so now you're like 0.5 WG. That's going to be your working pressure, all right? So this fan, for instance, blows 650 PSI at 0.5 WG. So I'm 50 PSI, or 50, I'm not, sorry, uh, CFM, 650 CFM at 
uh, 0.5 WG, and that, when you divide it by six, which is the square footage of the front, the filter face, is gonna give me around 100 square feet, uh, or cubic feet of, uh, of airflow per minute. Um, so yeah, I'm sorry if I'm losing you on this, but there, there's uh, formulas you can look up online. But yeah, basically you're gonna match your filter face uh, to your, your, with your restriction, and then your, your blower has to match at that restriction, at, at 400, or, or uh, I'm sorry, at 50.50 w, WG, it has to push that much CFM that you require. Um, the way I build it is, this is, I think it's like half inch, like the, the nicer wood, but not the cheap crappy plywood, because you want it to be flat. Also, you want it, you're in a lab area, so you don't want big porous materials. This really should probably be painted if I want to be super anal about it uh, with a gloss. That way it wipes down easy and it doesn't collect dust as much. But, um, so I, I, I don't even really gusset the corners on this, like put little braces or nothing. I just pre-drill and then countersink and I made sure it was the perfect size. So this corner is actually, um, it's like a channel. This corner is a channel and it actually goes into the wood. Like the wood is in the channel and then there's like sticky membrane seal stuff that's inside that channel that seals against the wood. And then the only thing that's holding it on is two little braces that I made, just a little piece of metal bent in an L and it just holds it back against it. And then I put the chicken wire over the half inch of mechanical wiring is the correct name uh, to protect the filter phase because you can put your finger through this thing and ruin a hundred dollar filter really quick. And I work in front of this every once a week do 40 to 100 bags a week and it's very easy when you're moving around and working to put a scalpel blade through it or you know the back end of your scalpel or or whatever i've done it uh, twice already now with this one or with the older one that i replaced because it had holes in it uh, if you do have holes in your filter hot glue or or any kind of glue that kind of i i use hot glue you probably use like elmer's glue or something like that but you lay it on its face and you want to fill that whole cell you want to fill all the way. This one doesn't have any, oh, there's a little patch right there. Uh, and you want to fill it all the way back. You don't want to just fill just where the crack is. You want to let it drip down into the grooves and, uh, and fi fi fill the whole thing. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it with, with flow hoods. Um, it's really nice addition to have a paper, paper towel dispenser on the side of your flow hood. You're going to use them a lot, wiping out the tables and cleaning things up. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I have for flow hoods right now. My one piece of advice is always go bigger. If you're gonna buy a 24 inch freaking, or I'm sorry, a 12 by 12 flow hood, you might wanna think twice about it. Uh, I would say at least 20 inches tall. If you're going with bags, this is even a little bit on the short side, uh, 20 inches. The 24 is much better off for bags because bags are only about, our bags are about 18 inches tall, 17 inches tall. So you really want to have more height. Right now, I currently have to kind of crunch my bags down. I'll open them and then crunch them down and then inoculate them to get the height. But um, yeah, so always go bigger. Like I think dream setup is like three foot tall flow hood by like the whole width of the table. That way, just anywhere you move, whatever you're working with, it's in this thorough flow. So, all right, thanks for checking out the videos. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, have a good one. Bye.